Hello and welcome back to Dear Esther. Okay, so we're making our way through the cave system that is within the island, this island in the Hebrides. I think that is how it is pronounced. Hebrides, 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 I think it's Hebrides. And um, these Scottish islands, Scottish islands, islands where, where Scots lived, presumably. So now we are, okay, so here's the next loading screen. I could have ended the last one here. I couldn't remember if this was it or not, but that's okay. It worked out well enough. So I came out of that. I cannot get back in there. So now we're going to come out of the cave system and back into the outdoors. More candles. A tent. Someone was living here or hanging out here. So the sun has gone down. The moon has risen. Um, there's really nothing over there. There's this big the diagram. The moon over the Sanford Junction. Headlights in your retinas. Donnelly drove a grey hatchback without a bottom. All the creatures of the tarmac rose to sing to him. All manner of symbols crudely scrawled across the cliff face of my unrest. My life reduced to an electrical diagram. All my gulls have taken flight. They will no longer roost on these outcrops. The lure of the moon over the Sanford Junction is too strong. More paint. Oh. Paint brushes. Luminous Premium Plus. Longer lasting. The moon. And you saw that, what appeared to be an electrical diagram painted over there. And I could, you could go over there, but there's, there's, those are all dead ends over there. There's nothing really, there's nothing over there that's really of interest. The only thing is something that I will try to look back at once I get over here further. Um, could go out there again. There's nothing really. I mean, you can see these, what look like um, fences, perhaps. Dear Esther, I find each step harder and heavier. I drag Donnelly's corpse on my back across these rocks, and all I hear are his whispers of guilt, his reminders, his burnt letters, his neatly folded clothes. He tells me I was not drunk at all. Okay. That was new. Sounded like it was in a different voice. Is that supposed to be Paul? Is Donnelly the narrator? Is, or is Paul Donnelly or what? Here we have a defibrillator, a syringe, mm -hmm. some pills, forceps, tweezers, and a scalpel, some gauze, like somebody performed some kind of a surgical procedure here or some kind of first aid or something. Although when you're talking forceps and a scalpel, you're talking about more than just first aid. I don't know what these are. I don't know if these are fences or if they're supposed to be piers or if, or what. Okay, so yeah, you actually can see it. So you see that the antenna there, and you can see that there's a design on the cliff face. Well, it's kind of, or at least that's that steep hillside, that steep slope there. I'm going to come out over here to get a better look at it. See that? Those might be the horizontal lines, though, that were being referred to. Although I think those are what were cut into the rock on that other hill closer to the lighthouse. And here we have another uh, diagram, a more complex chemical formula. I do not know what this is. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way in there because I don't need to. Here we have another cave, alcove cave. We have a tires, 
and a door and an exhaust system and a rear end. Or maybe it's a front end. Uh, that's, I think that's a front end. Because I think those are that's steering. Anyway, it's supposed to be car parts. Hall, by the roadside, by the exit for Damascus, all ticking and cooled, all feathers and remorse, all of these signals rooted like traffic through the circuit diagrams of our guts, those badly ridden boats torn bottomless in the swells, washing us forever ashore. A light from heaven shone around him. Yet another reference to the conversion of Paul on the road to Damascus. The light from heaven shining around him, it's, you know, he, he saw this light. So the account says, and he then went blind for three days. But who is the mysterious person that I saw earlier? Who is setting up all of these candles? From here, I can see my armada. I collected all the letters I'd ever meant to send to you, if I'd have ever made it to the mainland, but had instead collected at the bottom of my rucksack, and I spread them out along the lost beach. Then I took each and every one, and I folded them into boats. I folded you into the creases, and then, as the sun was setting, I set the fleet to sail. Shattered into twenty-one pieces, I consigned you to the Atlantic. And I sat here until I'd watched all of you sink. Hmm. Oh, if he's referring to these boats, they're still floating. One, two, three, four. Uh, is that one over there? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20? 21? Right, 21? Right, 21. I'm not going to spend a lot of time trying to count them. So go over here and just kind of take a look in here. Now if you walk out into the water, you quote, die, and you get that effect where it's like, whoa, 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 and then it says, come back, and you come back. On a sudden, a light from heaven shone around him, and he fell to the ground. Paul, on the road to you know where. So, actually, um... What I didn't point out before is that there is, that's right, on the hill up here, and hopefully you'll be able to see it when we get up here, there is a silhouette of a person standing. Mm, it's up around the corner here. So the person that we saw earlier in the cave is standing um, up here somewhere. Could walk back down and show show you but might be able to see it from here the pain in my leg sent me blind for a few minutes as i struggled up the cliff path i swallowed another handful of painkillers and now i feel almost lucid the island around me has retreated to a hazed distance whilst the moon appears to have descended into my palm to guide me i can see a thick black line of infection reaching for my heart from the waistband of my trousers <clears throat> Through the fugue, it's all the world like the path I have cut from the lowlands towards the aerial. So you can see right there in the center of the screen, there is the silhouette of a person standing there on that um, elevated outcropping with some candles. So now I drop down another thing you can't go back from. And now I'm going to come around here and go up there and look and do you, do you think that person's going to be there? I've begun my voyage in a paper boat without a bottom. I will fly to the moon in it. I've been folded along a crease in time, a weakness in the sheet of life. Now you've settled on the opposite side of the paper to me. I can see your traces in the ink that soaks through oh, the fine, not here. the pulped vegetation. When we become waterlogged and the cage disintegrates, we will intermingle. 
when this paper aeroplane leaves the cliff edge and carves parallel vapor trails in the dark, we will come together. Just uh, take a look out over everything here. I mean, so first of all, I mean, look at how relatively large these environments are, I mean. And he was proceeding on his journey. And as he was proceeding on his journey, as Paul was proceeding on his journey to Damascus. You know, not bad for, I mean, when did, you know, this is a source engine that's had updates, but I mean, it goes all the way back to Half-Life 2, which was released, what, 10 years ago? I don't even know how long ago it was, so long ago, no, it was longer than that. Uh, and was come near to Damascus. And as he continued on his journey, I was come near to Damascus. And he was three. If only Donnelly had experienced this, he would have realized he was his own shoreline, as am I. Just as I am becoming this island, so he became his syphilis retreating into the burning synapses, the stones, the infection. And he was three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. References to stones, presumably kidney stones. So I think, and uh, now that I, now that I've gone through this again, I think, um, yeah, I think those those loading screens did, were the chapter boundaries. Chapters of very of differing lengths. So I don't think there are headlights the reflected screen. in these retinas. Too long in the tunnels of my island without a bottom. The sea creatures have risen to the surface, but the gulls are not here to carry them back to their nests. I've become fixed, open and staring, an eye turned on itself. I've become an infected leg whose tracking lines form a perfect map of the junctions of the M5. I will take the exit at mid-thigh and plummet to my Esther. Here we have a sort of a mashup of a molecule. So I think this was some kind of maybe a gun emplacement during the war. Certainly this would have been a good place for it. some kind of mil old military uh, installation. Yeah, I think um, we're on the last stretch here, so I'm just going to go ahead and play through to the end. So there will only be three sections, I think. And it came to pass that as I, I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus. Oops, almost walked off the edge there. You can see some of the, the markings on this up there. Um, at after noon, something noon. Oops, come on. Blah, 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 blah. From heaven, a great light round about me and I could not see blind with panic for the Death glory with the roar of the cage traffic heart stopped on the road to Damascus Paul sat at the roadside hunched up like a gull like a bloody gull as useless and as doomed as a syphilitic cartographer a dying goat herd an infected leg a kidney stone blocking the traffic bound for Sanford and Exeter he was not drunk, Esther. He was not drunk at all. All his roads and his tunnels and his paths led inevitably to this moment of impact. This is not a recorded natural condition. He should not be sat there with his chemicals and his circuit diagrams. He should not be sat there at all. By the hand of them... Led by the hand... So, I mean, you know, when, when Paul was blinded, or at the time Saul, them that were with him, he uh, was led 
the rest of the way to Damascus, because he was blind. I came into, if you look at it, it's kind of interesting, like that letter I is actually kind of above Damascus. So most of what I heard is the same, but there were a couple different things. That's a pretty modern thing. Microwave antenna. Cell tower, even. I am the aerial. In my passing, I will send news to each and every star. Dear Esther, I have burnt I have no my belongings, control. my books, this death certificate. Mine will be written all across this island. Who was Jacobson? Who remembers him? Donnelly has written of him, but who was Donnelly? Who remembers him? I have painted, carved, hewn, scored into this space all that I could draw from him. There will be another to these shores to remember me. I will rise from the ocean like an island without bottom, come together like a stone, become an aerial, a beacon, that they will not forget you. You've always been drawn here. One day the gulls will return and nest in our bones and our history. I will look to my left and see Esther Donnelly flying beside me. I will look to my right and see Paul Jacobson flying beside me. They will leave white lines carved into the air to reach the mainland, where help will be sent. I don't know if he's supposed to say that Esther is Esther Donnelly is Esther is really Donnelly and that Paul is really Jacobson, or if he was just using that as a metaphor. So, basically, my understanding of this is that the narrator, whose name we do not know, was driving in his car with his wife, Esther, and they got into an accident that was caused by a man named Paul, who was drunk, and Esther was killed. At some later point, the narrator and Paul ended up on this island in a shipwreck, I guess. And um, I think the idea is that Donnelly was somebody who wrote a book about the history of this place. Probably some of, probably one of the books that we saw, or maybe many of the books, because it looked like they were many copies of the same book, uh, books that we saw as we were making our way through the, through the island, across the island. Maybe books that were in crates on that ship she was also hauling all of this paint and I guess candles too now, um, now who is the player character is it supposed to be Esther maybe the spirit of Esther following through her husband's narration after he died did he climb and throw himself off the aerial after breaking his leg? It is not made clear. We do not know. But that was Dear Esther. This is the end of it. Um, so you can see, you know, again, it, it kind of blurs the lines of what really is and is not a game. Because there was no actions there. The only thing that I did was move through it and look at things and listen to the narration and also the, um, the ambient sounds. You know, read the words that had been written on the, on the cliff face. I hear an airplane. I think that is a real airplane, not from the game. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, so it's 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 an interesting experience. As you can see, it's pretty short. Um, it's available on Steam if it's something that you're interested in checking out for yourself. Uh, although, 
you know, I don't know how much more there is to see. Um, like I said, supposedly you will hear different things on multiple playthroughs. Most of what I heard this time was the same as what I heard last time, although there were a few things that were different than what I heard last time. Um, a lot of people have found this to be a very moving experience. I find it interesting. Um, it was definitely the kind of thing that I was looking for when I picked it up. Something that was mellow, didn't cause any stress, basically an experience that I could have without having to be under any pressure. No competition with anybody else. No competition against, you know, a, you know, programmed AI or anything like that. No gunplay, no running, no jumping, no platforming, no fighting. Nothing like that. You know, is this a game? I think I would classify it more as an interactive story. Um, it's almost like a movie in that um, you progress through it pretty linearly and there's not a you know there's, there's really only one way through it there are multiple paths at certain points but they they don't diverge very far from each other and they all lead to the same place so I, I don't really know if I would consider it a game in the sense that there's no real skill involved. Um, it's, it's more just an experience, an interactive story um, that you know, is, is kind of cryptic and not really clear, but full of allegory and metaphor. Anyway, um, that's it. I don't really have anything else to say about that. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, I hope I was able to at least make it interesting. And um, so if you watched all the way through, thank you very much. And um, now I get to figure out what to do next. <laughs>